I remember my daughter, um, she was like three, and we were doing all the Disney stuff. This is before Princess and the Frog. Boy, I took her to Princess and the Frog. We did Princess everything. We did the cups. We did the tea party. We did everything. We went to Disney once they had Princess and the Frog. So because I said, baby, what do you want to do when, be when you grow up? And she looks at me, and she says, I can't be what I want to be. I said, what do you mean? She says, well, I want to be a princess, but none of them look like me. Mm. As a man, broke my heart. Mm. I was big mad, bro. And I thought about it, but yet here I was with the same mindset yes. earlier in life. Yes. Right? So I can't be mad at her for feeling that because I was Facts. the same exact way. I am on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Life is about helping others. Dear future wifey has been doing exactly that. You stated that women are to present and not to pursue. It has given us a, a roadmap on how relationships were meant to be by God. There are still black men who love the Lord and their end goal is marriage. Thank you for teaching me how to stay lit, how to be intentional and transparent. You read your, your letter, I cried. I just got married two months ago and I'm listening to the podcast so I can stay married. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield and this is season four these dating streets on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Latera Star Whitfield. Listen, we are deep into these dating streets. But before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, let's make a commitment and hit that subscription button. So excited that this week will mark our two-year anniversary this Friday on April the 15th. Two-year anniversary. We're still on the road to hit 100K subscribers, so do everything in your power. Spread the word. Tell your friends and family to subscribe to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm so excited about what we've been doing with Kingdom Royale. Um, you've been asking for an update video? Here it is. We now have access to the land for Kingdom Royale. So here's an update. 12 days after camping out on the land, a podcast guest felt led to help us out by purchasing the land to take it off the market. Now this gives us more time to raise the $1.4 million to purchase the land while also allowing us 100% access to meet with architects, developers, and just walk the land and allow the Lord to cast vision. So far, we've raised a little over $50,000. Thank you to all of you who've donated and crown the king. Your heart for giving is greatly appreciated. We filed for our 501c3 designation back in January, so the ball is moving. I've been doing a ton of research, meeting with other organizations who are doing the work in the foster care arena. Thank you to the residential group care facilities who've invited me to visit their businesses and are just being open-handed with a wealth of information. I'm eternally grateful for y'all. Shout out to Kathleen Lavelle, president and CEO of Dallas Casa. Man, she's amazing, y'all. She's been teaching me fundraising strategies. I'm really looking forward to the work we'll do together, Kathleen. God is so strategic, y'all. I'm so inspired. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick update and let you know what's been going on. Thank you for believing in Kingdom Royale. <laughs> My heart is eternally grateful for all of you who just planting seeds in our next generation. Make a donation today and crown a king. Thank you to each and every one of you who have donated to Kingdom Royale. We're still on a mission to change the trajectory of the lives of our African-American boys in the foster care system. Well, still in these dating streets. And we are in this mini series called Guarded. And uh, today's guest, we're gonna keep it lit. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Jay Bradley. What's happening, brother? Man, what's good with you, man? Man, we ran into each other. so. A couple of years ago, when I first started the podcast, uh, the fall season, I was like, I got to have this brother on the podcast. I love the way you showed up on the TV show, Ready to Love. Those who are fans of the show, that's why this brother looks so familiar. And um, I was like, all right, you know, I said, I want to talk to this dude. And then um, last week, I was at the grand opening of my homegirl, Brittany's beautiful uh, studio. And I was out eating brunch. And then I ran into you and I said, you know what? God is so yeah. intentional. He he yeah. he must want this brother to be on this podcast. And the crazy thing, bro, is that I hadn't caught up to your latest series, 
and our conversation just naturally flowed. Yeah. And you're like, I'm, that's exactly what I'm covering right now. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. like, man, won't, won't he do it? Because I was supposed because I was supposed to actually eat at another restaurant. And I got there and God was like, nah, here's where I want you to go. And I'm going to crazy. As soon as you walked listen. in, I said, Jay, called your name like we was homeboy. Jay, you turned around. <laughs> And there it was. You look like one of my best friends from from. He actually, he, I saw him earlier today, man. He actually lives in Dallas. You y'all look just like. So that's so what you thought it was when I called yeah, I was you. Like, what you doing here? I was like, oh, Dad, like, oh okay. yeah. <laughs> Dear future wifey over here. Listen, I brought you in to talk about the next installment, which is guard your eyes. Oof. Guard your eyes. So do you have any experience, any background on when you hear me say guard your eyes? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Man, for me. I used to have a type. And so I would go with my type regardless of the rest of it. <laughs> was was out the out this is when I was younger cat, right? Yeah. So like, ooh, that looked just like me. Yeah. And then you Five months later, I don't even like her. Yeah. You know it was a whole gag gift. <laughs> you know, you went and unwrapped everything. It was like, okay, the contents of this, you know, the character of this person is just not what I was looking for. It's, it's not, man. And that, that'll teach you to guard your eyes, though. Like, Because as men, I feel like we can be very visual. Yes. And a couple of, you know, you stub your toe, break a foot, then you break the leg. You're like, all right, I'm going to either have to be in a wheelchair or I'm going to have to learn how to. Not just go for that part and really dig dig deep inside. But you think that society has made it extremely hard for marketing, from advertising, that it's always catering to the male's eyesight. You see uh, cigarettes, and they'll be promoting that with the finest woman with a cigarette. Uh, encourage you to get cancer, by the way. But right. but she fine, though, so it makes you open to doing that. A stick of bubble gum, they'll promote that with a very sexy, attractive woman, catering to the male to do that. Uh, do you feel like... We get, it's like we get the short end of the stick because everything is catering to the male eye, but yet and still we're supposed to look outside of that and not uh, be led by that. I think it's really just like we're just now, maybe it's because of age, but or, you know, brothers like yourself really putting it out there to dig deeper. Yeah. Um, but like it's not really till now where my, me and my boys, one of the last things that when we're talking about with the female is how she looks. Really? Yeah, bro. Well, like, like to detail, like back in the yeah. day, you you know you're explaining, <laughs> explaining the boop and the pap and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And it's really like, man, she's so cool. Yes. That's my first thing out of my mouth is, man, she's so cool. And we get a chance to vibe and the conversation flows. And oh yeah, she's fine too. So how so how important is conversation? Everything. Really? Yeah, man. Like, cause it, okay, once you get down to the nitty gritty. After all that's done, what's he gonna talk about? <laughs> what's he gonna? You, you're a business owner. Yeah, I'm a business owner. Yeah, my conversations are different now. Right. I'm not talking about how do the Rockets do or how <laughs> or the Cowboys play. That's not my conversation. <laughs> no, not my me. conversations, man. Tax season's coming up. Okay, did I get enough write-offs? <laughs> or you know, hey, I saw this came out. Or we're talking about crypto. Or I need somebody that can have these conversations with yeah. me because I really want to have that all in one. You know. So when you say, so now listen, I'm going to challenge you. Would Come you on. take a woman that's not as physically yep. appealing? Really? Go ahead. I'm going to let you finish you the know, So you'll take you a up. woman that's not as physically appealing for a woman that has everything else you're talking about. I did an episode called Preference Versus Purpose. Yep. And so preference, we have these preferences in our mind. We want a woman to look whatever. Whatever her dress size is, all that stuff. Uh, physical appearance, whatnot. You tell me you would go for a woman that most men be like, what you see in her but she has everything else so that way you know that i'm not we literally just taped the episode two we talked about power couples two weeks ago and we said i I'd never heard yours on that we said um paper versus purpose because a lot of times on paper you're checking off all these boxes okay but then at the end of the day like they can have it can be the opposite yeah. she can have a, the, the great income and all this stuff and and be beautiful and all those other boxes but then you don't feel peace at home Right. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. So, I, I'm, yes. So, but, the answer so, question But is, I want to know how extreme is that, though? Because we, we we still got eyes in our head. So, you you, you tell me, because it's you're going to be challenged. These women finna slide in your DMs. <laughs> They're going to be like, all right, now put your money where your mouth is. They're going to be like, hey, listen, you said you don't care. They're going to have everything else. Everything else. Look, so uh, doing the show was the perfect test for me. Yes. And I learned a lot. Right. Because you have no idea who's going to be there. Right. And... My normal quote unquote type wasn't there. 
Really? But I vibe so hard with Joy. Okay, so what's your normal type? Joy is beautiful, though. She's beautiful. Beautiful. But I'm just saying, I had just had a certain type. Like, all of them look like they be cousins. You know? Like, it would be... So you going for the little light-skinned girls all the time? The little, you I, I know. grew up in the South, man. I, look, that was me. That was me. I'm not... It, it was colorism all day long. <laughs> it's a dark-skinned dude that likes a light-skinned girl all day long. You just, and you and, just, and you it just may a, be a, a reflection of my mom, too, because my mom is fair-skinned, but she, she as a kid, she was very dark-skinned. Really? Yeah, it was weird. So they used to call her, like, the black sheep, like, real, the black sheep. And then, and then she got lighter, she yeah, got older. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. No cream involved. Just, just straight up. You know what I'm saying? What Another, is that about? I don't know, man. I think it just, but I, it blessed her with the mindset because back then to be dark skinned was like, yeah, it's just like, yeah. And then she grew up and, but she never saw herself that way. Um, and so it was, yeah. So, so she still the, looked at herself as a dark skinned girl. Yeah. Even yeah. though she was light skinned. Mom's a gangster, man. She, she, she the prettiest dog you've ever met. <laughs> she, she Tupac in a dress, though. <laughs> like, she, so, yeah. so when you grew up, you were, you, uh, the way you dated earlier was, that you got on ready to love and then you chose was that your first time choosing uh a darker skin one no 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 okay yeah yeah i'd been out of that but still my long-term relationships had been i think I, when i did ready to love we were right at 40 something so um yeah i had my my ex-wife was actually mid-tone maybe a little bit lighter than you but i'm talking about when i was young it was you know it was like the yellow yellow like couch, the about the, you know, say yellow ball, yeah, yeah, yellow ball. ball. <laughs> you know and it's crazy though i was having a good conversation with a, a friend of mine who's darker than me and she was like jay i just never felt beautiful when i was younger yeah and i said that's crazy because i understand exactly what you're talking about because yeah. as a dark-skinned brother me too back in the day the key sweats yeah they, the i'm sorry not no, key no, sweat no, albie shore they want the albie shirts yeah. they want the shamar more so when i grew up i was just like yeah, I'm just a, a dark skinned man, and I just. I just I guess. And I had a Jerry curl. <laughs> So we all that's, had to have that's that. insult yeah. on insult, bro. It was like, what's wrong with your hair? What's that on your jacket? Like, <laughs> and I was skinned out. My shoulders hadn't built out yet, so I still had a big head, but my shoulders hadn't built out yet, man. So it was. We we've all had our stages. We bro. did, and so growing up, you're right. It was like I didn't think I was attractive at all because I was dark skinned, uh, and then. But I, I still chose the girls I dated, like the mother of my child and my ex-wife, they're dark skinned women. Yeah. Like I was always attracted to dark skinned women. Yeah. And um and then so I was kinda like all over the place. So I I, I looked at beauty. I like light skin, dark skin, peanut butter skin. It's just I just like women, period. Um but it was one of those things that the woman who I married and the woman who I had a child with in high school were all darker skinned women. And it's crazy because like you said, and you, you hit something key, you said, I grew up in the South, so it is what it is. What does that mean when you say I grew up in the South? You know, so I, I didn't even know that these terms weren't okay back then. Like, oh, yellow bone. Yeah. What's up, red? <laughs> this like, what are we, soda? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, what you, 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 you purple soda? That's what we doing? Like, but it's just <laughs> things that you thought were normal yes. and thought that that was okay. And then you get old and you're like, yo, we were wilding. Yeah. We were wilding. The we fact taught, that, though. you know, that I thought that beauty had to look like this. Yes. And it was a more European representation. There it is. Of beauty. And then when I got to know myself more, and then of course I have a daughter now. Yes. And that will so change. I remember my daughter. Um, she was like three, and we were doing all the Disney stuff. This is before Princess and the Frog. Boy, I took her to Princess and the Frog. We did Princess everything. We did the cups. We did the tea party. We did everything. We went to Disney once they had Princess and the Frog. So, because I said, baby, what do you want to do when, be when you grow up? And she looks at me, and she says, I can't be what I want to be. I said, what do you mean? She says, well, I want to be a princess, but none of them look like me. Mm. As a man, broke my heart. Mm. I was big mad, bro. And I thought about it, but yet here I was with the same mindset yes. earlier in life. Yes. Right? So I can't be mad at her for feeling that because I was Facts. the same exact way. And so that helped me. But, of course, before that, you know, when I married my ex-wife, she wasn't, you know, light-skinned, yellow bone, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so it, it's just, it, it, it just now we know better, so we do better. Yeah. Yeah. And so what did you do to help uh, – reshape her idea of what beauty was and what a princess was oh bro immediately i went i went and googled the original princesses 
Ooh. And I went. We did a history lesson. It was. It became Black History Month. <laughs> right there. It was <laughs> right there in August. It was. It was Black History Month, bro. We <laughs> look at all the original princesses. Look yeah. at all the kings. Look at. Yeah. They all look like you. Let's yeah. go take it back stri- scriptural. Yeah. Let's talk about what Jesus. What the Bible says of that Jesus looked like. Yes. Let's go back and really, really talk about yes. it. Yes. And then let's. Okay. So now you cool? Yeah, I'm good, Daddy. Right then we went to then we went to Disney. I think we went to Disney and um, at, at Orlando, and Prince the um, Tierra was it Tierra the uh, Princess? Yes, from Prince yes. and the Frog. And so she saw her, and her life whole life was like, oh, they Daddy wasn't lying. They really do have black princesses. Oh, they had a black princess. Yeah, in that one? from Princess and the Frog. Yeah. yeah, you didn't watch the movie. You no, I, I no, my daughter, my daughter grown. Okay, okay, my Go daughter twenty five. It, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah. Go back and watch it, man. It'll be a good boys' night thing. We'll, we'll do it tonight, bro. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah you know, me and my boy, we finna go watch Princess and the Frog. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You can't now make that cool. Yeah, it didn't even sound right. You're right. Let's not do it. We'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the. I'll send you the thing on, online. So, what has your journey been for love? You, how long ago had, uh, was your divorce? So, man, I got. Uh, I filed for my divorce 13, 13 years ago. Thirteen yeah. years ago. Thirteen years ago. What has that journey been like on your way? First of all, let me ask you: Do you even want to be married again? Yeah, I was at my attorney while I was going through my divorce. Asked me that, and I was like, "Heck yeah, yeah!" Like I was excited. I've always about been it. like that. Me too. Yeah, me too. Because. I didn't get it right. Yes. It didn't mess up marriage itself. Yes. I just chose the wrong person. Yes. And that's okay. That was part of my journey. Yeah. My daughter's here. And so I would ne- I would do it the same. As painful as it was, I would do it the same exact way because I wouldn't have my kids. And that's everything for me. Yeah, that's good. So so when I when you know, but it but it sucked. Divorce sucks. Man. Oh, that's the most painful thing you go through. Bruh. Yeah. Like And it should be like that because you became one and now you're divided. And uh the Bible says that the two shall become one flesh. Yeah. So I don't know anything that's not painful if I start trying to tear my flesh off my body. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna be a painful situation. And so when you do it right, it should hurt when you go through it. Yeah. If you never was fully invested in it emotionally and mentally or spiritually, then you'd be like, all right, that's just like a girlfriend and you just got divorced and keep on moving on. I was all in and I don't believe in the whole separate that back then. I didn't believe in the whole separate bank accounts oh, and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. I was like, yeah. we, you know, even though I was taking care of like everything's yeah. in one pot, and my yeah. attorney was like, "Don't do that." And I was like, "Man, I need to be fully committed to this." One hundred percent. I don't need to be in the in the shallow end yep. and the deep ends over there, and that's what the real, real marriage is like. <laughs> and I'm over here in the kiddie pool. Over playing. I need to, and and you're supposed to risk it all, um, because what I got out of risking it all and putting it on it was the biggest pain in my life, but also the best journey of my life. Talk about it. And so coming out of that. I discovered so many things about myself and it's easy to point, man, I can't believe this person did me that way. And then when you look at it like, oh, I chose that. There was a red flag over here. Yeah. That doesn't mean she's a bad person, but it just wouldn't work for me. Right. And and this actually goes back to the title of today is with my eyes, I was so like, Oh, she bad though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, she yeah. bad though. So, like she had the long hair and you know, clay toned skin and all that stuff yeah. that is cool. But then, and it doesn't make her a bad person because we didn't work out, but I need somebody that's compatible with me. There it is. We have a different idea of what a successful marriage looks like. Yes. And then, so while I'm on this journey trying to have a successful marriage, you're doing this and thinking that that's success. And we, there's no way we can meet in the middle. We going this way. Yes. And that's what we ran into. And um, so then what has that journey been like? 13 years ago, you got a divorce. How has these dating streets been treating you? You know what? So I filed for my divorce 13 years ago, and then I let her get her financial house together, and we spent – so we didn't finalize our divorce for another two and a half years. Okay. So then I got into a long-term relationship. I had a 10-year. You had a relationship for 10 years? Yeah, it was off and on 10 years, man. God, Yeah, it was off and on 10 years. We just couldn't get it together. We just couldn't get it. We were both hard-headed. A Virgo and a Capricorn, it it just, yeah, it can work, but that one didn't. We're still friends today. I saw her out the other day. We we were at a a restaurant. It's my boy's birthday party, so we went to, like, a club afterwards, and... um, she saw me and a, a song came on. She was a, she was across the room with another guy <laughs> sitting next to him. A song came on. She came over to me, grabbed my hand. I said, sweet. You know? For real? Yeah. But she was, she, was she there with the guy or she was just talking to the guy while she was there? I think that was just one of her friends or whatever okay. case is. She didn't leave her date. You yeah, know what it was like? Yeah. No, Jay knows how to dance to this song. But we danced on the dance floor and then a young lady that I had gone on a date with was in the room too. She's like, I see you over there. I was like, yeah, that's my ex, man. We cool. So... 
okay, you know they say the relationship after a marriage never works. A relationship after uh, yeah. a divorce or whatever never ever works. That show didn't. It didn't. It did. It did, but it didn't. It did. <laughs> it's a, Ten years. I, I, you look. I and I. I was. I'm a very honest dude when it comes down to. Here's where I feel like I am right now. Yeah. Um, I don't think that I can give you that, but I can give you this. Yeah. Right. And so I was not about to jump into another marriage. Um, I was healing. And I, every woman that I did, you know, you were healing. Absolutely. OK. Oh, I was I'd never been in that, man. Bro, I, I know it's myself to sleep. Bro. I know. But sometimes people don't they know that they're depressed. They know they're in pain, but they're not intentionally healing. Oh, no, I was in counseling. Okay, you was a I needed, Yeah, I, I couldn't figure this one out. Good. I, I failed at something that I tried my hardest Good. at. And in my man mind, yeah. I succeed in football. Look, if you're running and you want to run faster, <laughs> practice running faster, right? <laughs> practice with a parachute on your back. Go get your track coach. Run yeah. through the track season. There's ways that you can become successful in something. Talk about it. And so it. with my marriage, I tried. We had three different counselors. I exhausted all. All the possibilities. Yes. I, I did not have an ounce left of put more any energy into it. I didn't. And it took my counselor saying to me, I think you should file. The counselor said it. My counselor told me I should file because I, there was nothing left. And I have this issue where I don't want to give up if I put all in on something. So people have asked me, like, man, you haven't gotten married again. I look forward to it. But I know me. I'm going to put every ounce of my soul into making it work. And so I'm going to choose wisely. I'm going to make sure that I'm at a certain point and hopefully find somebody that's equally yoked um, to where we can continue this journey together. But I can't give like that. That hurt, bro. That, yeah. <sighs> so, Come on, talk to me. Go ahead. So where are you at now, though? So do you feel like you're fully healed from that decision? Oh, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. So you, yeah. you're you on the other side of it. Yeah. Uh, you want to be married again. Yeah. Um. Are you intentionally dating? So am I going out everywhere and looking and saying, ooh, this is my person, this is my person? No. Um, when, we, when we ran into each other, right. there was a young lady, you're like, man, she this and that. And I was like, is she cool, though? Yeah. yeah. All of that outside, that's the first thing I asked yeah. you. And she was beautiful. Yes. But is she cool? Like, what's her head like? Yes. Like, what's her mindset like? Right. Because that's where, that's where I can work. The other stuff? <laughs> you find it everywhere. Gravity's going to hit. <laughs> They start off up here, they're going to be down here. Same thing with me. You know, look, my, my hairline going to be five years, it's going to be back here. I'm going to have a LeBron headband, but it's going to be this thick. Like, we, all of that beauty is going to fade. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. Who am I going to deal with at the end of the day? Your mindset usually gets better, not worse. Physical mm. will always usually get worse. Mm. You do the surgeries and all the stuff, stay in the gym, but just naturally gravity is going to hit and things are going to happen. The Bible says charm is deceptive and beauty doesn't last, but a woman who fears and reverences God is greatly to be praised. Come on, bro. And so, and that's what I said that we're so deceived in today's, uh, just, to, just, just by society standards, like Instagram yeah. will have you, have you so deceived. You, 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 you hit that explore page. Boy, let me tell you something. I was minding my, let me tell you, I didn't even know the Explore page existed until like last year. Wow. I never ever knew it because I was never on Instagram. I was on Facebook and I got on Instagram when I launched a podcast uh, back in 2020, but I still never ever saw the Explore page. And somehow I done swiped something and then I was like, what is all these fine women in the, on my page? What is this? The it algorithm picked up. Right. It was everywhere. And I said, what is all of this? I didn't even know what that was. And I was talking on the phone with my friend. They was like, oh, that's the Explore page. I said, Explore? Like, how? How do you get? I don't even know how to get back there, but it's right, just, right. it was just a bunch of just it's a slippery women. slope. That explore page. What is that? That's like a slippery slope. <laughs> and then you go. I, I I understand now how hard it is for guys to be faithful in a committed relationship because you sit up there if you're on Instagram all the time, you're always seeing the grass on the other side, and you always feel like so. A lot of guys, a lot of women say that social media has been one of their biggest uh, competitors because if, if a man gets in an argument with his woman, he gets mad and they fall out, he's like, forget you. 
Okay. Yeah, so and he go right. sit over there and go <laughs> right. in the bathroom, sit on that toilet, and be like, this. <laughs> let me DM her real quick. Hey, girl, what's up? Put uh, eye, eye emojis, heart eye emojis on her pictures, put fire emojis, then start DMing her. Next thing you know, he got a whole nother little old situation going on. And we're quick. talking about the whole world. So this yes. isn't just, okay, she in Dallas or she in Houston. Yeah. It's not like you going to the little spot down the street. And yes. Like, never know. And so that's why the trust in the relationship, man, has to be there. Because I have guys that fly women out. Yeah, like, oh yeah, yeah, all I, day. I, I'm like, man, where'd you meet Shorty? Oh man, I saw her on Instagram, and I flew her out from Detroit. She bad, man. I'm like, you flying him out Detroit? You ain't meet her first. You just put on the flight and the whole. Okay, I guess I ain't got it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna FaceTime day. I'm, let me hit you on the FaceTime. Let me, let me. No need to get flewed out yet. Let's, let's just do a FaceTime. But have day, you ever bro. dated a woman out out your city and flew in? No, I haven't. I need I need to not to say that I wouldn't. Yes. Um not seriously dated. Like I've dated somebody where okay, when they came in town, we go out to have dinner so forth so on. Yes. But I actually have a girlfriend out of town. No, I haven't. I haven't. I would. Um but I would need to I need to at least see you once or twice. I'm busy working most of the time anyway. So, um that actually might work. Because it allows me to do that, and then whenever we have each other's time, you, you we zero just end on it. Yeah, zero in. Yeah, right. so you might have just put me up on something. Yeah, you might. You Where might was that do that. Page, how you get to? It? I don't know. I gotta figure it out. But it sure popped up, and I was like, Jesus. Uh, but trust me, after you do this episode, there's gonna be a whole lot of women. Like, no, I saw man. you on the podcast. I saw you on this. We got some amazing uh, supporters of the podcast. Matthew six twenty two okay. through twenty third. Uh, 23 says the eye is the lamp of the body so if your eye is healthy your whole body will be full of light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of darkness if then the light in you is darkness how great is the darkness Oof. what does that mean to you Oof. the eye is the lamp of the body so if your eye is healthy your whole body will be full of light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of darkness what does that mean Oof. <laughs> Take my glasses off for that one, so I could, you know, when you back up and you gotta you gotta <laughs> turn the radio down. Goodness, no, nah, man, like that's so deep though, because at the end of the day, man, when you're when you have a bad understanding of what beauty is, and if we are consuming what we see, yes, and you are now internalizing that, and it's not like I went to a restaurant the other day and I love their scallops, and they just had a bad batch. I don't know, it's some. But I didn't realize until I got to the last scallop. And I was like, this don't even taste right. But I've been consuming it because it's what I visually wanted yeah. and what my memory was. Teach, so, teach. So for me, I, I it literally It took a while to, for you to realize. I was so stuck on my type. <laughs> you know? Like, seriously. Yeah. And, so, and so I just, and my boy was eating with me. I was like, man, try these scallops. And he had tried one and he just stopped eating them. And I was like, bro, you ain't want to tell me. He's like, well, you were liking them. So I just figured it was, you know, like you just got bad taste of scallops. And I talked to the manager. He's like, oh, no, I tasted one day. I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. What were we making? I was like, no, nah, I'm cool. I, I got a crab cake instead. Yeah. He's like, I need to cleanse my palate of it. But that's literally what yes. that is. Right? Yeah. Like, like you have to be conserved, careful of what you consume. Um, at the end of the day, also, when we're on Instagram and we're looking at all these things that aren't realistic, they that that's one out of a thousand shots that somebody took to get the perfect angle. There it is. And then hit the filter and then hit the slimming tool <laughs> and then hit the, you know, we talked about oh, that's this on failure to communicate. Like I, <laughs> so it's no secret. I'm gonna just tell it. Go. My, my, my. So I, today I, I <laughs> I'm going to put you out there, too. We don't like lotion. I don't, <laughs> we don't, I don't like lotion. lotion. I don't put lotion on nothing. <laughs> I, I don't put lotion on. And, but I never wear socks. And so a lot of times I'm going to have some ashy ankles. <laughs> just, 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 just accept it. Just, you I, see and Jay? I'm okay with that. But before we shot, I'm telling I'm telling you. Know, tell him. So before we shot today, I said, man, we going to have our ankles on camera? He said, yeah, it's the whole. I said, all right, let me. So I went to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I got some soap and some water. <laughs> and mix it together. Make some bootleg together, lotion. And make some bootleg lotion and wipe off the remainder of the soap. And I came and I showed him. I said, see, no need for lotion. <laughs> he said, I don't like it either. I said, thank you. <laughs> I feel like it's a waste of lotion. Man. So it's, it's a waste of lotion. No, no, go ahead and get your analytical mind on what you say lotion was. So, so what I told him, I said, well, if lotion is a petroleum product and we're trying to save <laughs> the world and our natural resources, then by using lotion and overusing lotion, then we're really wasting this this beautiful earth's natural resources, which is an offense. You know what I'm saying? So, so he has gone green with his So I've legs. gone green with my no lotion. 
I'm he's trying to not, save. He's yeah. trying to save the planet. So. I don't think lotion's made out of oil, though. So it, it, it makes no sense. But I appreciate you for riding with me. On it. But no, that's that's a deep scripture, man. I, I'm gonna have to get that one from. Here's me. another one: Psalms uh, 119 and 37. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. Mm. That's Instagram all day. We're just talking about, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Because oftentimes, and like you said, you hit the nail on the head. Is that? And it's, it becomes real crazy when we can't even post a picture of our authentic self without throwing a filter on us. Like It's like we're so filtered that we can't even show up as our authentic self. And and I, and I always wondered, I was like, why you got to put a picture on all your... I mean, and people, people will blur their whole face out in a picture and you have a testimony. I want you, it's testimony time in the church today. What was your testimony about your filters, your Man, filter story? Bro, so this is a real, this probably happened. So we did the photo shoot for, for the podcast, right? And so uh, Joy and I in the, in, the, in the pictures. And so she's like, pick out your best ones. I said, all right, cool. So we're going to use those for the site or whatever. And I had edited some of them. So because I don't wear lotion, <laughs> There's a there's an app where you can hit the uh, the smooth tool, <laughs> and it makes it look like you have lotion. He <laughs> said, "Like lotion, <laughs> it's, it's like a lotion filter, right?" <laughs> Most maybe the, the the people that are less melanated don't need a lotion filter, so they didn't name it that. But I was like, "This is my lotion filter," so I put the lotion filter on there because you know we got the bald heads, and sometimes your head yeah. be ashy. Yeah. So I put my lotion filter on all the pictures. So she calls me back immediately. What the is going on with your pictures? I done blurred my head in the background. I don't have no edges. <laughs> and, and, I ain't gonna and, be bald headed with no edges. Right, right. Yeah. This whole little line just blurred into the exactly background. Exactly like what ghost. she said. She like said one of your eyebrows is missing. And I didn't notice it because I was focused on exactly what the scripture is about. This unrealistic idea oh, of what we need to look like, and she said, and and, I, and I, so it made me look at my other friends and be like, okay, so this is a real friend. What y'all been letting me what? go out here with with no edges? <laughs> y'all been and one eyebrow and one eyebrow. So I went and looked back at my pictures, and sometimes you got it. I appreciate the friends that will tell you the truth that hurts. Exactly, it stung. It stung until I put my glasses on. <laughs> That's the other thing. Don't edit your photos without your glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I was doing. I wake up. Let me do some edits real quick. No glasses in sight. And so I went back and I put my glasses on. I had edges in about half my. Y'all go to my Instagram and you can. It's okay to laugh at it. I would laugh at myself all day long. If you look at my pictures that I posted probably from about a month and a half ago to the last year and a half when I had found my lotion filter. <laughs> no edges. No edges. Said, lotion filter? Oh, How was your yeah. lotion filter? You, you was killing them? You was killing them on the ground? Well, I, was, right I, was, I was. Throw that filter all up I on was, Bro, I was, I was lotioned up. <laughs> But isn't that crazy though? Don't you find that like you you you'll meet somebody, you you see them on Instagram, you meet them in person, you be like, oh, you you a different whole skin tone. <laughs> you be like a whole different body type. What are you talking about? Skin tone, body type, everything. I've I've done that, and I've had people get upset with me. You know what? Because w- when I've run into them, and I don't recognize them, and this happened the other night. I saw the her face was the same, but. Her there body. was a slimming tool that was used in some of those pictures. She was beautiful either way. But the way I had seen her was like this. And I just saw her online a week before. And I was like, how you gain 60 pounds in a week? And, 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 and I realized that's the edits. But she was probably looking at me like, oh, he has both his eyebrows. So, so, so I, I, I didn't put the app up, man. I'm matter of fact, after this conversation, I'm gonna uninstall it. You gonna uninstall it? Pre- and let people see your natural self. Look, I got both eyebrows. Oh yeah. God! But that yeah. is so real. It's yeah. like people putting it on their videos. They put. It's, and what's so crazy about it is that we are brainwashing ourselves to yeah. never show up as our authentic self. True. It's the craziest thing. That's true. And like, and like, anytime I'm taking pictures, if I'm out with my friends or whatnot, and I, you know, they like take a picture, and they be like, send that picture to me before you post it, because I gotta edit it. Right. And I'm like, but you look great. You know right. why you yeah. gotta edit your photo every time you post it? Yeah. And it's like, and it's the craziest stuff because yeah. it makes you not be 
happy with how you physically look in real life and when and your representation to the world is something so altered that it just doesn't look much like you. And we're both fathers, right? Yeah. And so we have a whole generation of uh, kids that are grown up and cuz back when we were kids, you took the the fish and then the thing come out and, and you just you got, and that's your picture. And that's your picture. <laughs> There's no edits. <laughs> a lot of times, not even a retake. Or if you took it regular, yeah. you had to wait till it got developed. Develop and you come back, that's your picture. That's your picture. You yeah. stuck with it. That's it. We it. got a whole generation of kids that has the ability to never have to look at themselves for who they really are. Talk about it. Say and that one more time. Never have to look at themselves for who they really are. And so that's the scary part because as a father of a daughter, if she slips, she doesn't have any social media mm -hmm. that I know of. She might have it at the mama house. But she's, um, she's nine, ain't she? No, nah, she's 15. Oh, 15. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I miss nine. Nine nine was a beautiful age. 15 is... Oh, yeah, that's a different world. I'm not going to chop in the throat. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, chop in yeah, the throat. I love, exactly. I love I'm yeah. not going to chop in the throat. But, but, but it's, you, you know, yes. you get a chance to see them become this, this beautiful young woman, and they're yes. testing boundaries and all that yes. stuff. And so while you're doing that, she does a great job of, because I've... I've, I've Oh, I've been through all the stuff that we've talked about. So I've given her every time I see her, baby, you're so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I love you so much. I, I wanted to hear all of that from me. Yeah. So that it don't matter what nobody says yes. outside that door. It's how she looks at herself and how her father sees her. Because yes. that that opposite sex relationship that we have, the one that you would have with your mother, the one that I have with my mother, the one that she has with her father, mm -hmm. is where we get our sense of identity of who we are. In in as 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 an attractive person or our confidence level. Yeah, I think Kanye had said something. He's like, I don't care what y'all say. My mama told me. He I'm, said that I, in and that documentary. It, when I watched the documentary, I was like, that's beautiful. Yeah. And then I recognized, even on a deeper level, how much he is broken by the absence of his mom on this earth. I'd be the same, bro. Boy. I ain't gonna lie. My 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 Tupac in the dress. I look that my lady Tupac there. In the dress. I talk to her every day, every day. <laughs> I just talk to her on the way up here, man. Like that's like I take her to dinner. I date my mom, man. Good. Like we go out on dates. We have a good time, and but she's given me so much knowledge of who I am as a young man. My confidence come. People are like man, you just think you. My I'm mama like Kanye. Told my mama yeah. told me. You know what I'm saying? Like I saw that clip. I was like, say that part. Now, everything else you're saying is crazy. But say, but say that, that part that. again. Run that back. Say it. Stay on that. Because I said, agree with you. There. Mama said, yeah, that was that was yeah. that was a powerful statement. Yeah. And so, how do you believe? How do you feel that social media is shaping your daughter's viewpoint of herself? Has she, she ever? Have has she ever said? Oh, or she, she don't, she don't have, have it at all. She don't have social media at all, to my knowledge. But we've had the conversations. We talk about that stuff on a daily basis. And you, you'll see if you go to my social media, man, me and my daughter will have pictures where we go out on date nights and, you know, we'll put the hats on. I'll take it to a concert. We went to the Neo concert, went mm. backstage. We all got our hats on, you know, this yeah. and that or whatever. And we do stuff like that. And, and I, we, I let her dress however she wants to dress because that also is an articulation of do whatever you want to do. You don't have to fit into what I think. Hey, I, we were going to church the other day. I was like, sweetheart, you know, can you put a dress on? I don't want to wear a dress. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can you put something on nice for church? Okay. I'm not going to argue with when, you. When you, say, when you say the way she want to dress, would she wear anything very revealing? And you'd be like, I don't nah, care about that. she know that at gangster. She know that at gangster. Nah, she know better. But you say you let her dress out how she want to dress, right? At this point... <laughs> That's because we ain't got into the, the the shorts and the midriffs and all that. Ain't no belly button now with me. Come on, bro. Come on. Say, man, interview over. No, <laughs> We're not doing that. And thank God that I don't have that daughter that wants to do that at this point in life. He said, ain't no um, belly button now with me. Ain't no belly button now. <laughs> My daughter used to drive me crazy doing that. Man. She used to be like, I need, I'd be like, stop dressing like that. You're dressing out. Dad, you act, oh, you just supposed to, no, just nah. please just don't. You know what I'm saying? Because what's going to happen is I'm going to have to go up somebody, somebody, <laughs> some, uh, uh, beside somebody's head when they look at you a certain kind of way because I'm going to see him look. You're not going to see him. And then you're going to wonder where dad got his elbows out of against this man temple. I'm pulling Will Smith stuff on people. It's not okay. <laughs> and so I'm trying to prevent us both <laughs> from having a messed up night tonight. <laughs> And my daughter knows me. She knows. She don't let me come up to school no more, man. You I'm, gonna I'm snap on somebody. Have you ever had the uh is your daughter dating? Say, it, bro. It's just a question, Jay. It's okay. It's no, okay. man. Okay. Not that I know of. Okay, all right. <laughs> just, just ask. It's a safe place here, I Jay. Told, it's, it's not a safe, a safe place. Certain questions are not safe. Did I I should have sent you a list of stuff not to ask me, man. Look, look, you <sighs> He said, not that I know of. <laughs> 
I love how you keep prefacing this. You not never that know. I know. Yeah, my daughter had a boyfriend for three years and kept telling me that she don't got nobody. I'd be the last one to know. I think I'd be the last one to know. <laughs> and and I'm okay with that. But I trust her judgment when it comes to people, and we have these conversations. Um, and I feel confident in in her 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 foundation as a young yeah. woman. Um, my mom's heavy in her life as well. And so she gets that even though, and that's one of the things that I, that I, that's actually one of the reasons why I stayed in my marriage as long as I did for that daughter is because I wanted to make sure that mm-hmm. she had her idea of woman, but her, her seeing me as a broken man, wasn't going to be a solution either. Good, good. Explain so, that. So for me, a lot of times we say we're going to stay together for the kids, but kids, and I've done this, as an adult, and I look back, why did I make that decision? It's because it was something that I got comfortable with in my childhood. So I saw something in my childhood and then was like, okay, well, this is what's norm, even yes. though it wasn't. And because it was something that was comfortable with me, I continued it with it. So, for example, my grandfather, I never saw him drink at all, okay? Um, I'm, but there's a certain smell that I will smell, and it reminds me of him. So I'm out one day, and I'm playing ball with one of my boys, and I'm like, bro, you smell like my grandfather. What cologne is that? He's like, I don't have any cologne on, bro. We hooping. I was like, okay, well, he's like, man, I drank so-and-so last night, though. And I was like, my grandpa had been drinking this whole time. <laughs> but it made me feel comfortable because I associated that smell with my grandfather. Yeah. So I say that to say is that we can get comfortable with situations in our lives that we are comfortable with, but because we saw that dysfunction growing yeah. up. And then we choose it in our adulthood. Mm. And so for me, the reason was like, I can show her what a broken man and stay in this relationship and be a broken man. But then she's going to go and find it later on. And then talk I'm gonna be about upset it, that she got an ain't crap dude. Yeah. But she really looking at me and saying, well, she just like you daddy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I can leave that relationship. Wish my ex-wife the best. I pray for her on a regular basis because she has the responsibility of showing my daughter what a woman is. There and she's going to see that most from her. And I have my separate responsibility to, to show her what a man is. And that's a hundred percent on me. If I mm. mess that up, that's on me. If she go get an ain't crap dude, that's on me. Mm. I can't slap him. I need to slap me. Oh, you said a mouthful. So oh, you said a mouthful. That was so powerful, bro. Yeah. But man, it's, it's, yeah, you know, fatherhood, man. Oh, trust me. Yeah. It's the most beautiful thing, especially when you raise a daughter, it gives you a different vantage point on women. And, um, yeah, it just, it's a game changer. Yeah. It's, 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 it's yeah. You it's, stop the, you stop the bull crap at that point. Yeah. You'd be and like, then I start looking at women that I date when they, when I do something, when I when they do something that I, I'm like, man, she tripping. Bro. Yeah. But then I think about it from a father's perspective and I'm like, Okay, that's somebody's daughter. Yes. So what if she went through this? And I have more understanding as a guy that dates now. Facts. Especially having a 15-year-old because you yes. got to understand some things. Nine-year-old, you ain't got to yeah, stay as much. We're playing yeah. Disney together. Yeah. So that that's one of – so I'm going to ask – can I ask you a question? Ask I know this me. is your podcast, but no, we keep it at 100. We, we talk. Is your daughter dating? My daughter is engaged okay. to be married. My the, daughter is 25 years old, about to be 26 at the end of this month. My daughter's engaged. I've been involved. Like, I am I was that father that's sitting at the school. Uh, like, I was extremely involved in my daughter's life, even to the point to where uh, when she started dating with my knowledge, and then she, <laughs> which, when she graduated high school, and her and her now fiance that was her boyfriend they went to school together they went to texas a and m and uh corpus christi and i had them sign a contract that he would not open up the the package of my daughter with until they got married but he didn't do it though hold on he didn't do it now he he reneged on the contract he reneged on the contract but but i had a whole little letter i say listen i haven't given my daughter to you i said that happens on the day that 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 she, she gets married and I will give her to the man that, that I see fit. And I said, so you're opening up my property because I still have her. She, she, she still belongs to me because I'm providing covering for her. Uh, I'm paying all her bills. Uh, my name is on the fast perform, like all, all that stuff. That, that, that's me. That's all me right here. So don't mess with my property, period. And, and, and I said, She's mine. I said, you treat her right. You honor her. You want to marry her. You want to do it right. Then I will gladly, they say at the wedding, who gives this woman away? I will gladly say here, Fam, you know? Bro. And so, uh, but you know, temptation happens and, and me and my daughter talk about everything. And so she ended up talking Obviously, to me about it. I'm like, unless you got some grandkids or something like nah, that, like, how do you know? That was we my talk, next question. We talk. 
I and love she, that. And she bro. told me, she's like, my mom told me not to tell you or whatever because you ain't going to take it right. And she said, but you've always been that person I could talk to about anything, everything. And I know how much is th this going to hurt you, you know? And she was like, but I just want you to know that I'm no longer a virgin. And she had given up her virginity like the month prior. And then I said, um, I said, so now you remember all the stuff I told you, I said, once you end up having sex with somebody, just a bag of just issues, just pop up or whatever. How y'all getting along now? He said, we just argue for nothing. Now we just get into it for nothing. Now I, said, I told you, yeah. I said, it just happens. It's, 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 it's the craziest thing that happens because the minute that, y'all were all innocent and all that then y'all were cool y'all didn't know then the minute y'all end up bringing sex into the equation now that's a whole nother issue now y'all having arguments about stuff that you don't even know what you're arguing about and i said life is a journey i said i don't i can't control you i can't live my life and your life and i said and as you know i had you before i graduated high school so you were born two weeks before i graduated high school she came to my graduation as a two-year-old i mean two-week-old um was in the stands watching me graduate as a two-week-old baby um and i said so you understand the the pressures that come along with that by me being a father at an early age the pressure that came along with that the struggle that came along with that the the issues that you you may have seen um, me and your mom go through because we're these young teenagers. I'm 18, she's 19, and here we are raising this child together, <clears throat> but we're not together. Yeah. So that's a whole nother set of issues. Like she, she dating whoever she dating, I'm dating whoever I'm dating, and we trying to raise this kid together. Right. And I said, when we start putting stuff ahead of his time, we invite unnecessary drama. And I said, so this is your journey you're gonna learn? You're gonna learn what it is. As a dad, I can tell you, bro, the relationship y'all have, the fact that she felt even being advised not to, y'all has such a dope relationship to where she's like, nah, I'm going to tell my dad because yeah. we talk about everything. That's everything, bro. And that's what it meant to me. It, it, and it also said that even when she told me I can't go off and, to, and act a fool over it, nah. it's happened. Yeah. So let's just talk about it. Let's talk yeah. about now what, what, what space are you at, daughter? Where's your mind at? Where's yeah. your heart at? Because I know for a fact you're going to still need me as your father throughout this whole journey. And I want to create a safe space that you can always come and be like, Dad, I did this. Dad, I messed up on this. Dad, I, my, my credit jacked up because I didn't pay this credit card. I got a credit card. I didn't tell you about when I was in college and now I'm a credit jack. Yeah. Like, let's just talk about everything. Yeah. And, um, and that's what it is. And that's what I've always created a, a, a atmosphere of is just creating a place with, you know, with my kids to be able to like to talk to me about any, any and everything, you know what I'm saying? And I, I always say that you only get in trouble with me when you don't tell me if I got to find out the hard way now we got a problem because now we don't have trust I don't I don't I can't trust you Armani and I y'all everybody hear me talk about him on all my podcasts but Armani same situation like the other day he put a hole in my wall you right. know what I'm saying and, and and I said he called me up hey I'm just letting you know I was I was mad and I was swinging I just punched a hole in the wall and I was like Ugh. You're going to pay for it. And yeah. you're going to do the work. You're going to fix it. But if I would have walked home, if I would have came home and walked in the house and saw a hole in the wall, he didn't say nothing. Now <laughs> I got to drag across the, the floor. Yeah, yeah it's going to be, be holes all throughout the house. Because I'm like, now you don't put a hole in my house. Then you only respect me enough to tell me about it. He kind of big, though, bro. Yeah, I, but we, well, just, me yeah. and me, Armani, we be, we, be, we be going at it. We used to. We used to tussle a lot. Uh, I love that dude, but it's like, like we'll, we'll, we'll tussle. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'd be like, because Armani, he, and, and that's what, some of the things I try to tell him, too, is that, I was a teenager before. I tried to buck up against my dad. I told my dad one day I was in front of my girlfriend who was the mother of my child and she was pregnant at the time. And my dad said something to me and this is the one and only time I ever snapped back at my dad. Showing up. And I was like, I said, nigga, don't say something. I said something like that back to him. <laughs> my dad is a third degree black belt, right? My dad, he a cowboy. He took his hat off. Oh, you knew right then. Because I said, I said, I said, I was, I said something to him. He took his head off, just so gentle and calm, put on the thing. He said, swing. I said, <laughs> every scenario, I, and, I, and I balled my fist up. I was like, I'm finna hit this dude. This old dude, can't ha he can't handle me. Every scenario I came up with in my mind, I found myself on the ground against the wall. But I kept saying, why, why can I win even in my thoughts? Like, and I'm sitting up there like, I can whoop him. I can. And then I just said, man, I ain't got time for you. I just did that. I'm, I'm going to tell you what you what your young mind didn't pay attention to. The slow removal the slow, of the yeah. cowboy. <laughs> when somebody's is that much control in that moment, oh, it's so trust and believe. The fight has already been lost. Like <laughs> but he was like, 
I don't want to mess up my head. I, I lost right here. Right <laughs> at that point right here when the hat lifted off his head. And I saw it because I was like, I don't think I can whoop him. Like yeah, at that yeah, moment, at I was like, moment. I'm going to yeah, swing yeah. at him. Now I'm going to be extremely embarrassed in yeah. front of my quote unquote mother, my child, yeah. who's carrying my child. Yeah. My child is going to be embarrassed in her, in, in his, right, <laughs> in her right. mom's womb because right. I'm going to get slammed on the floor. Right. So and he get, has to do it for me. The first time she pull her neck up, she's going to be like, mm. <laughs> Got hold out. <laughs> just couldn't even wait for me. You got hold out. <laughs> you got hold out, and that's what happened. And it's like, but that's what happens with masculinity. You try to, you know, I'm 18 years old. I'm like, you ain't finna embarrass me in front of my girl, so I'm gonna speak up. And then I was just like, man, I'm not even. I don't, I don't even want that smoke. Next time I get ready to get in a fight, I'm gonna pull your dad's move. I'm like, <laughs> take your little head up. <laughs> They gonna be like, man, I don't even, I don't, <laughs> that's you know, man, man, we, we man. that's called de-escalation. Yeah, de-escalation. This is de-escalation <laughs> right here. Just put it down. I'm gonna make eye contact the yeah. whole time because it's always with yeah, the eyes. Eye. <laughs> what you gonna do? Yeah, when somebody look at you like that, they slow. You know, he got a little bit of crazy in him because he yeah. ain't jumping, acting crazy. And so that's what it was. So Armani, early on when I first adopted him or whatnot, he would, you know, first the first phase, the honeymoon phase. That's my boy. I love him. He yeah, all up around yeah. me. Then he started going into this other phase where he wanted to test me and yeah. talk crazy to me. Yeah. I'm like, hold on, you ain't gonna disrespect me now. Now this ain't this ain't happening. Then we bumped heads, and now we now we good. You know that's what I'm saying? Just, it's a, re, a mutual respect between each other. You know, but yeah, he used to he used to be like it's who that's yeah. the rite of passage man i did yes. it with my father i know my son will do it with me your son's doing it, done it with you and then you get a chance to be friends yes and there was a certain point where i got to my relationship with my father i tried to buck him did all that stuff i wasn't doing stupid stuff in the streets and he was like man that's not what i raised you to do he wouldn't even mess with me but that's a, the 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 love between a, a, a son and a mother is one thing it's nurturing it's always going to be there um, it's almost like God's love. Yes. Like omnipresent. You just know, regardless of what you do, mom's going to love you either. Yes. My dad, <laughs> I had to earn that. He showed me how to be a man. So if you want to do this, yeah, we roll. Yes. Now, if you want that other stuff, you know, stay over there with your mama. <laughs> and my dad became my best friend. But it, yes. we went through that, you know, I almost got it. My dad was in karate. He was, a no, no, he, he was Taekwondo. He yeah, learned Taekwondo. My dad Taekwondo. That's yeah, what it was. He was over in Korea and he yeah. learned it over there. He learned it over there. So that was that straight so, off. You know, so you went you you about, about to buck up. You about to buck up to him. I still tried. I still I was in football. Thought I was you know what I'm saying the testosterone started going through you, man. I just got a fresh haircut. Thought I was the stuff, boy. <laughs> what you do? What Bruh, I did the same thing. Went to buck up to him. And he did something that just because they have a control over their most we, we got some old school dads. <laughs> they ain't getting excited about nothing. No. Oh yeah, that's so what you want to do? <laughs> Might give you a little hey, Denzel smile. Laugh. Hey, little laugh. <laughs> <laughs> My, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, and, and that's it. it. So I, I, I but uh, what he did that would happen. It just it, it de-escalated. I, I I saw something that uh, I think it was a it wasn't quite your journey, but I just knew by looking in his eye. <laughs> And I saw the pictures of when he was over in Taekwondo, you know, doing Taekwondo, yeah. and you know, and I was like, "Yeah, that's probably not the best." Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not even a starting running back. I'm a backup. Like, I mean, what am I? I'm not even doing way too much right now. I ain't even starting. Bro. Ain't even, I'm on the bench most of the game. Till he get tired, then I go in doing too much, man. I almost lost my life, man. It's so so, bro, I wouldn't even. But I want to. I want to. Well, there's something we covered, man, and I, I feel like I'm gonna have one of these moments with my daughter. And I appreciate you. I feel like we have a little bit of therapy session right now, some dad talk. Yeah. So, so when you had the conversation with your daughter, uh, with her boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, which is dope that she, ended yeah. up, you know, is going to end up marrying the same. Gender. Yes. Like that's fly. Yes. Seeing my daughter date a bunch of dudes and yeah. like it, I used to try to encourage her to date a bunch of guys. She's like, Dad, why would I keep dating if I already found the one? I was like, you don't even know it's the one. Because I, I would challenge her. You don't even know. That's the only guy you ever met. That's the only this, this, this. You got to do this. She was like, when you know, you know, Dad. I don't have to. I don't want to be when those girls is messing around with different guys. I don't want to be be that person. That's because she and got I was a great like, relationship with you, bro. There it is. Yeah, she found somebody that does he have some of the same yes, characteristics? One hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He and hit I was it with like, that communication. He yes. knows how to communicate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She felt safe and secure. She's like, and I'm there good. it was, and, it, yeah. and and it's a wrap. You know yeah. that whole little thing. And so I've been like, all right, 
you 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 got it right real quick. You know yeah. what I'm saying? She got yeah. it right real quick. She's smart. And so I was like, all right, you, you you know, everything is really, really cool. But he grew up without his father being present okay. in his life. So I'm fathering both of them, wow. which is so beautiful. Like even when they went to prom, there's a picture on my Facebook page where I'm getting him dressed and I'm t- putting up his 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 corsage and all that stuff and putting like all that stuff. Like you're 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 he I took him to go get his tuxedo. That's you know what I'm saying? It's like all that Did little you pay thing. For it? Uh, yes, I paid for it. Then I had um, a horse drawn carriage take them from the the hotel where they got where my daughter got dressed at down the street to um, where the prom was at this called the Below Mansion in Dallas. And they had a horse drawn carriage. The horse had a. I was just looking at this picture yesterday because it popped up in my Facebook memories because this is prom season. Yeah. And the horse had a blue sash around his neck, and it was coordinating with her blue uh, dress that she had. I hope that my daughter doesn't see this episode. <laughs> I ain't buying this boy no tux. <laughs> it's not gonna be a horse drawn carriage. They might get an Uber black. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm not doing all of that. That's why I was telling Armani. Armani, I want to go to prom. I said, go to the prom so I can. This is our prom. I want. I want to. I want to have you pull up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Hey, ask. If she got a horse drawn carriage. Get you a Lambo, bro. <laughs> Y'all get you a Lambo truck, pull up in the Euros on them. You know what I mean? Like pull up on them, flex on them. But my 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 question to you was is when you had the conversation with this young man. Did you have a gun out there? Was you did you have no. a workout shirt on? No, what I did the- was, and I've always thought about that from the scene of Bad Boys yeah, and all that stuff. I'm- but then I just said, I just gonna talk to him okay. because at the end of the day, it's like. <sighs> Fear only lasts so far. Yeah. So it's like, even with my relationship with God, my relationship with God isn't based on the fear of God or okay. me being fear, fearful of him that if I do this, I'm just going, he's going to burn me up and I'm going to die. Right. That I want people, and I tell this to uh, Armani all the time, he's like, you want me to be scared of you? I said, no, I don't want you to be scared of me at all. Right. I want you to just respect me. Yeah. See, respect goes further than fear right. because the minute you feel like you can whoop them or beat them up or shoot them or whatever it is, your fear is out the way. You yeah. just like, man, I will hurt you. Or if I get sick and or, or I get feeble and break my leg or something happens while I'm in a wheelchair, he ain't fearful of me no more. Right. He may be like, I can hurt you, old man, right. but he respects me enough to say, I will serve you, Father. That's right. a different level. So that's what I wanted from my my uh, my son-in-law yeah i'm gonna say that my son-in-law Speaking is that i want it rolls yeah. well don't it yeah it's my son-in-law it's hard to say <laughs> but my son-in-law because i used to always call him uh my daughter's friend that's a boy i would never call me i said her friend that's a boy i would just that's gonna be me right there <laughs> her friend that's a boy that's all it was so uh because it, 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 it ain't nothing more than that you're just a friend that's a boy yeah. and so um now he's going to be my son-in-law. But the reality was I wanted him to respect me so that if he respects me on a certain level, then he knows not to mishandle my daughter yeah. because he knows how much I care about it. And you don't want to p- bring out that other side of me because if you bring out that, that thug side of me, what God delivered me from when I grew up in the hood, then you just don't want to meet that person. Yeah. I, that, that person is, I always say that's BC. That's yeah. before Christ, you know, let that be over there and, and just, just meet this, this relationship. Part I'm going to probably bring a little bit, BC with me to the meeting. I'm going to bring a little BC with me to the meeting, man. I, my daughter's 13th birthday. I took her to the gun range. We shooting ARs. My, yes. And daddy got the toys. I took my daughter so, to the gun range. Uh, I, 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 I'm a, you know, I already talked my, I got some nephews, man. They, they good sized dudes. I got one of my partners. We've already, we've already practiced the Will Smith scene. I'm going to do this part. You do that. It's going to go down. It's going to go down. And I'm, I'm, I'm in the muscle shirt. I'm going to do it yeah. the whole, I'm going to get a hundred pushups before you get there. <laughs> Like nice little beads of sweating. I got it. Look, I've got it in my head, man. It's gonna go down. I won't because you only have that one, one moment. Take. That I, one I, moment. I got that one take. That so one even, moment. I want to make sure I get it right. So I'm gonna do fear. I'll work on the respect after. <laughs> I appreciate your approach. I just I'm a mama son. I got a little. Yeah, you got, you got, you got, you got a little Tupac. I still got a little bit of BC. In me, you know what I mean? So we go we gonna mix it. But I appreciate that, man. I'm gonna, I need that application, by the way, too. Oh, definitely. I yeah. want to I want to leave with this scripture right here. What does it mean when God says uh, where David said this to to God okay. in Psalm 17, 8, He says, "Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Keep me as the apple mm. of your eye." Mm. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. The the apple of the eye is 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 keep your focus here. Right. right. And even in finding, you know, I'm a single guy. Um I look forward to meeting the woman that God intends me to be with, who I can really be that man. 
but even in finding that relationship, it's really based on God's on our love for God. Yes. Right. Because your relationship should be in the image of what we're supposed to be as a married couple. Yes. Um, and, 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 and that's what that means to me. Um, I just, that's the beautiful moment when you really are with the person that you know, God created you for. And also that you've done your work to present to her who you're supposed to be in that moment. Like, well, people will ask me like, man, who do you, you know, what are you looking for? And this and that I am looking for the woman that, that I can be my best self with. Mm. There's a man in my head that I know. And I prepared myself. I stay in the gym. I do certain things to make sure that I can be that husband when that time comes. And so it's just like, if you've never ran a, ran a, a marathon, you have to run in order to be able to run a marathon. If you don't exercise those muscles, if you don't exercise your lungs, mm-hmm. if you don't get used to the pavement and the pound and be able to get pushed past that, you'll never be able to be able to successful yes. in that race. And marriage is the same thing. You yeah. have to be able to practice now. So when I'm dating now, even if it's a date that doesn't go well, I'm still preparing for my wife. And I just, I, I won't be with somebody that I don't think that I can, be that man for and that's not a diss against them that's good though that's not a diss against them but i just i I just truly believe that i'll know and it'll be based on me doing the work and her doing her work and we will align like this and that's and that's what it'll look like so that's the apple of the eye to me in conclusion how are you guarding your eyes um i protect my space bro um i i i I don't date a lot, um, and I wouldn't go out with somebody that I don't think has possibility of being that. I don't need to. So you date with intentions the whole time. I'm careful about using that word, and 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 yes, I am. But when I, if you say that to somebody, (laughs) you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Girl, he looking me at his wife. Mm. No, I said that the frame of mind that I'm in, am mm. I dating with intentions? But I'm saying that, hey, this is an interview process. I'm looking for, I'm looking for a new hire, but everybody that comes through ain't the person that's qualified for the job. Yeah, and 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 it's and it's not anything bad against anybody. No, it's, it's just I I have a really good idea who that guy is. I was on a date not too long ago, and we talked about. That's it interesting. You say who that guy is versus who she is. Everybody, I feel like we're all focused on like I, I talk to my I'm that guy that my female friends come and talk to right I've even talked to the, the girls I dated for 10 years and other uh, about their relationship yeah. that they, they've currently been in that they've been in past me because who knows you better than your ex they you gonna pull that same stuff on him that you tried to pull on me and I'm gonna call you out on he can't because he don't know <laughs> he don't yet. know you well enough he don't know you well enough yet yeah. but if you're calling me then you know I'm that friend that's gonna keep it 100 with you um, I'm going to do it in love and we're going to grow through this together because I want to be, I would love, I'm going to be the first one dancing at their weddings. Yeah. If I'm invited, I'm, I'm dancing at the wedding. Probably it's going to be a nice gift. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Unless, 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 unless I'm looking real bad so he can be up there. Yeah. You know, that was ready with me, huh? Yeah. You know, yeah, boy. You, yeah. Yeah. I did you the favor today. I did yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but I really want to see everybody Win. do well. I yeah. Wanna, bro, that's, so I've had those conversations, man. And I really want, I, I just, I'm, I'm open about it, man. Let me I'm ask you this before we conclude. We got to conclude for the second time. Come on, Pastor. What made you go? You know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Wrap it up several <laughs> right. times. You know, I'm walking in before that, you long. That anointing, right? I'm gonna be before you long. On my third <laughs> closing, I, I want to ask you, brother Jay. Uh, uh, when you went on the show, ready to love? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Were you genuinely looking for love? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, I, for me, and it was a weird process because I didn't go back and watch any of the episodes. You didn't? No, I couldn't. Why? I'm way too analytical. I'm way too analytical. I wanted to be natural in the process. And I knew nephew Tommy. Nephew Tommy had been in my real estate office before. And we, you know, we talked about some real estate stuff like that. But I didn't call him before when I went through the audition process. I wanted it to be organically. Like, if this is what God had for me on my journey, I want that to be the case. So the first scene, I was on the couch. It was me, nephew Tommy, and one of the other guys. And we're about to shoot. And I started talking. He looked, Jay, what the hell are you doing here? (laughs) I said, man, he said, why you ain't called? I said, man, I, just, I wanted to, I didn't yeah. want to, you know, maneuver yeah. and do all yeah. that. If this is what it is. And so I 
was in a relationship. This was this happened right before COVID. So I was in a relationship with a young lady. We had dated, and it almost went the distance. But it just, it just, I knew it couldn't work. And uh, we're friends to this day. Ran into it the other day. Matter of fact, I ran into it at the rodeo. Gave each other a big hug and all that stuff. And um, but we were I just into that. And I was getting DMs from the the casting people at the end of it. And I was I'm open in my relationships. I'm yeah. Like, Hey, I'm getting these things, but you better not do it. You better not do that. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'll be mad at you do it. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so the relationship ended and they were still, um, still uh, looking for up. people. And I was like, yeah, let's talk, you know? Um, and it just so worked out to where because of COVID, we ended up filming six months later. Oh, because we were supposed to film in March. COVID had just come out like March, February, yeah, March. Yeah, it happened in March, and, and uh, yeah, yeah. And then so we ended up pushing it back, whatever cases. And so it just it just worked out that way, man. But I really was like, okay, I've tried the swiping. I've done that. Um, I'm I'm usually working, so I don't do the clubs. I don't yeah. want to meet nobody in the club no, not unless you're there and you never get out and you're that girl that's like sitting there. And uncomfortable, not, not having a good time, not having a good time because you don't really get out. It's been yeah. a year, you yeah. know, and you come, you like, who are all these people and why they turned up and who's drinking out of the bottle and why? They, I want that one. <laughs> exactly. I want that one. I want, I want that. Ooh, there, there she go right there. Like she's not in these streets, right? <laughs> like she's not even street friendly. Like she don't have street tires on or nothing. Like you know, so friendly. low mileage, you know, um, you know. So original title, you know, just uh, <laughs> so they got a blue title, yeah. yeah. So. So, so I, that's, and, and I just don't do that way. So I'm not going to date anybody in my industry. Well, I've been in real estate for 23 years, but I've only dated one woman in my industry. Wow. Um, on purpose, because a, a lot of times I'm the only African-American male in the room and I don't want my personal reputation for my dating life to precede me in business. Mm. Um, and that's something that my parents taught me. And so fast forward. Um, it was just a cool experience. And I was like, man, I'll do this and I'll do it once. But I couldn't think about it. I like, I pressed the button on it. I didn't tell anybody. My mother didn't even know what I was doing. Wow. I was gone for almost a month. I and was she like, never hey, knew I, what you were doing. Oh, y'all no, couldn't tell nobody? We could. Uh -oh. but I, I, I didn't because I didn't want anybody to talk me out of it. <laughs> because one really good friend, your friends know you well. Man, you know, if you do that, they're going to be all in your business. And, it, and I would have been like, you know what? I sure don't want to about it. That's exactly what it was. So I didn't tell anybody. My mom uh, told us, like, I'm going to be gone for probably up to a month. You know, I set stuff in place or whatever cases. Okay, people, you know, access to my house at, that because, um, you know, you, you're there for three, four weeks. And you would have had to, they tell you bring a month worth of clothes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, y'all ain't going to have me bring a month worth of clothes. And then I go home the first week. <laughs> that was going to have me do. So I brought two weeks of clothes. And then I had my assistant send clothes for the next week. Yeah. And then I had my partner send the clothes for the week after that. Yeah. And um, I had all the clothes and, up, up there a bro, whole month. Because it's a brother that packed for a month and went home the first night. <laughs> That's a long walk with four suitcases. <laughs> That's, you talk about walk of shame, bro. Like, I. I wasn't about to do that, man. I had zero confidence in my ability to, I don't know who's going to be there. I might get there and be like, I don't like none of these. I'm gone, y'all. Like, Oh, there he just go walking up in with four suitcases. Four suitcases. That's, and you sweating. It's the middle of something. Man, I'm not about to do that. It's August in Georgia. I just, it's just kind of like how you pictured out with your dad. Like, all these situations look bad. I was like, let me go and give me these, these two weeks of clothes first. <laughs> and then, worst case scenario, I'll pull up in Florida or something like that and have a little vacation and tell nobody. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. Uh -uh, nah, I was shooting. It was good. It was yeah, good. It was two weeks, good. I'm back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but it was a good experience, man. I mean, it, it, it got me out of my comfort zone. Um, you, you had to deal with things. There's never a point in life that I've been in, I don't think that most people would be in, to where you're dating a woman, you're also dating her friend in front of her. <laughs> Those two women are dating your homeboys in front of you, and it's okay. <laughs> ever, 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 ever. So Never, never that scenario. Never. I would, yeah. you know? And so um, it was more of getting out of a relationship having some time for a break and then jumping into like the crazy swimming pool of dating that of ready to love yeah. as it is. And it was, I learned a lot about myself, man, seeing I, myself on TV and like, I need to be better. I love how you, uh, when joy left, you left. Yeah. It, cause yeah. it, cause that showed how authentic you were. Like ain't nothing here for me. Like, it's not. 
it, and there's no disrespect to any of the other people there, but we just got along so well. Yeah. We laughed every night. Like we would look for each other at the end of filming. Um, cause it'd be long days, man. You film from like 9 AM until midnight and you're on camera all day, mm. all day, every day, no days off for four weeks straight. Dang. And so, which was cool, but there's you need to have those moments where you can just chill out. And yeah, we would do that. Yeah, it was like that sane moment at the end of the night where I was like, man. And I would talk to her about everything. Like you know, there are some scenes where somebody came up and was like, you did that. I was like, we already talked about that. Yeah, yeah. We're not, like yeah. I'm that way when I'm there. Yeah. I ain't trying to hide nothing. I'm yep. not trying to trick you into nothing. Yeah. Here's what I have available. If this works for you, cool. If not, I think you're an amazing person, and I wish you the best in everything. Yep, deuces. When you um y'all have a podcast together called go and drop the name of your podcast failure to communicate man why so, y'all name it failure to compute uh failure to communicate so it's failure two communicate right and we were having a conversation i called her up we we literally didn't talk for about probably nine maybe six to nine months oh I'm talking about we was at nephew tommy birthday party not so talk I, to each other. Other. I got a date with me she over there talking to somebody else Gave each other a little side eye and kept it pushing, right? Like, it was just, we weren't taught. We literally had failed to communicate. And I called her and was like, man, we're so cool. I miss my friends. She's like, I miss you too. And we just had a cool conversation for probably about 45 minutes to an hour, broke down some stuff. Here's where I hurt. Here's where you hurt. I apologize for my part on this. You, you know, whatever case Dude, is. Some grown people and stuff. Some grown people conversations. Yeah. There are some people that are supposed to be in your life and you know. Yeah. And to me, for God speaks to me. And so for me to know that I'm supposed to do something with that as a man and be too much of a coward mm -hmm. to have a phone, phone conversation. <laughs> it's I, sad. It's I a had lot, to check myself. Yes, man. yes. And so and, you had the conversation. Y'all decided to do business together. Yeah. And so we decided to do the, the podcast together, man. And and I was, you know, she's like, well, what should we name it? And I was like, man, I was like, I don't know. We just had a failure to communicate. She's like, that's the name. I was like, what are you talking about? Failure to communicate. But put it T-W-O instead of T-O. And I'm yeah. like, people don't think we can't spell, first of all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, and, and when you, you, know, you look at your YouTube and see how people found you, yeah. and they never put the T-W-O they in there. never put T-W-O. Never but, um, and, and so we talk about stuff like we talk about, like just a lot of times, man, men see things a certain way. Women are wired a different way. And we are a lot of times, like, so most of the times when I talk to, to women, my homegirls will be like, look, I want to feel safe and secure. Yep. And when I talk to my boys, we say, man, I want peace in my house. Yep. We saying the same thing. Yep. Safe and security is peace. Yes. So we're saying the same we're thing. We want the same thing and we're saying it different. So the podcast is really opening up that conversation and we disagree a lot. We disagree a lot, but there's, there's always somebody and we, we do like a live chat during it and we get a chance to have the interaction with the fans and somebody like, Good. Jay, you tripping, Jay, you tripping. I'm like, yeah. I said what I said. I said what I I'm said. I'm double down on Yeah, it. And I'm double down. I'm 10 toes on this one. You know what I'm saying? So, and, but, but we have to have those conversations yeah. as a culture and as a people because how do we progress without talking about it? Your daughter came to you and had the conversations about something that is probably the most guarded thing out of anybody's mm -hmm. life. Yes. You their know? sexuality and who they're having sex with and if they're having sex and they're saying that to their dad. Because you created an, what I call an open container of communication yeah. for y'all to reside in, within. And it would feel weird for her not to have that conversation yes. with you. Yes. Fast. Shouldn't our relationships be the same? 100%. And so, and that's why I would accept nothing less. Uh, listen, I want everybody to make sure that I'm going to put a link in the bio, in the description, actually, in the YouTube description to uh, of your podcast link. I want y'all to go. And subscribe, right. subscribe, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, I've been watching a couple of episodes, uh, and like I said, it's some. You, you asked me to give you feedback and all that. We're gonna talk about it and 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 shape this thing to be something great. Because what I love, what's what's the cool dynamic is, you have these two people that used to date that are no longer dating each other, but they're doing. I call it purpose work together. Yeah. Um, and I say some people come into your life to be your destiny helper. Uh, they may not be your purpose partner, but they become your destiny helper. And y'all come together and do destiny together. So that's, that's, I found that very fascinating. So that's a really dope Man, situation. I appreciate you. Look, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, you know, maybe one day we might have you on. Yeah, or yeah, something, come you on up there. We're going to chop it up. Look, chop look, it up. Look, I, I drive, look, I drove up here today for you. So, you <laughs> yeah. know, I ain't nothing oh, yeah, but a I little come, trip. I come slide down to Houston. I was just there last week. So it ain't nothing but a hop, skip and a jump away. I'm well, listen, man, it's been an honor talking to you, Jay. Listen, uh, so dope, dope brother. Always want to sit down and talk with you. And uh, y'all give it up for my new homie. 
Guard your eyes is an interesting topic because we're always swayed by what we see. You know, the perception of something. We say, well, it seems like, well, it looks like, and we're always swayed by that oftentimes. Um, so I think it's very important that we are very conscious about what we are what we lean towards, what we believe, things that influence us, um, not just by just the physical definition of sight, but even our our mental sight, our emotional sight. But here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, Sometimes I wish I could keep my eyes shut until the day your hello unlocks my eyelids to steal a glimpse of you. It's mandatory that I guard my eyes. May two angels stand guard on my left and right blocking distractions with their two-edged swords. I can't afford to veer off the path of delaying our purpose with each other. I'll remain guarded in the best way so that in the future I can guard and protect our covenant. I'll have eyes only for you. Looking at you in all your glory confirms God's love for me. I am seen by him. You will be seen by me. Your future hubby. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit. Live intentionally and transparently. And don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.